Hi, my name is Gordon Verhall. I'm the DOP in Andromeda. Um, we're here just entering into command, which is the heart and guts of uh, Andromeda. This is a, a huge set in terms of a television series and the amount of space we've got to cover and the amount of things that go on here and the amount of different systems that all play at any given time. Um, there's a whole pile of different uh, departments that make this thing run, as it were. We've got the lighting guys who have got every light on here on a computer board that can slip us into battle blue, emergency mode, mode, disaster mode, all the different modes that you as audience members will know what goes on all the time. We have the effects guys who will run all the slipstream drive, which is the big ice cream scoop up top and the magic chair that comes back. As many of you know, when they go into slipstream, which is their hyperspace travel, a bunch of buttons are pushed and a whole bunch of events come down. And this thing starts sliding forward, this huge mechanical thing, all on its own drive. It comes all the way up to here. Super high-tech, sophisticated stuff, you'd think. Well, let's see how it actually drives. OK, so our super high-tech slipstream drive, well, this is the hearts and guts of it. This here slides that whole horse that you just saw. Bang, 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 and they'll have a cue marked up on the, on the wire here. This other one here brings in the big ice cream scoop from above. So on cue, two effects guys here are just pedaling like crazy to get that in the marks. Hopefully the actors are cleared and we don't clunk anybody in the head. So far we've been lucky. The screens are dark right now. Uh, David Langtree, Langtree, our computer guy, will make all these screens come to life with whatever graphics, blue screen, green screen, whatever other creations or aliens or adversaries are talking to us. So at any given moment when all this is going on, we go battle blue, we go pyro, and all the effects guys have all these bank machines, as we call them, all rigged with wires and different circuits so they can blow off all the pyro. They can also drive in all the slipstream stuff, all the lighting cues go, all the, all the uh, actor effects, all the computer effects. So it's, it's a huge deal to make all this work, and it all has to happen on cue. We can go from battle blue to emergency to disaster mode all in a single shot. So you're essentially lighting this all up. Three different looks for one take. And it all has to be able to go bang, 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 like this. And we usually have Orson, who's our uh, board operator, has a hidden little camera here that he watches everybody on. So you always have to be careful what you're doing. But the, the most amazing thing is, is as big as all this is in here, and this small, well, it's actually large envelope, what goes on above and beyond up in the ceiling, up in the pockets, where all these lights are hanging, all that. We'll go have a look up top there and just see where the other guys who's working the other end of the show really works. We'll go have a look here. OK, so here we are up above command, which nobody's ever really seen before. And literally, it is a spider web of catwalks, chains holding everything up, lights, lighting positions, diffusion, scrim bags, and all these positions that these guys have to basically hang upside down to get to all day long. And uh, believe me, in the summer, it gets unbelievably hot up here because down the floor might be pretty hot, but up here, all the heat rises up. It's a black tar roof, and these guys literally, they've got a half an hour they can be up here, and then they got to come down. But uh, all this is built from day one. We've had it here. And uh, between this and the other sets, we've got probably over 2,000 feet of catwalk in here, which all has to be hand cut, hand chained up to the rafters. It's a very laborious, long-term kind of thing we put in here. So here we are. I've just walked in through the veteran chamber door, which uh, premieres episode nine of season five, which in these underground tunnels in Seaford, they found the secret veteran chamber with all eight doors, each one on each planet, where these guys can teletransport through. So in episode nine, you'll see how they actually work, and these guys can walk through these doors and travel time, travel space. Um, this happens to be a treasure chamber, which is one of them. And we'll often plant on sets like this to our cave set, which is sort of the anchor of it. This could be a forest. We bring in a bunch of trees for this. This could be a burnt out city. Um, this has been the Magog world ship, the inside of it. Um, and we'll go inside here and we'll show you some of the passageways and stuff that we've got along here. I think all the Magogs are dead right now, so it's pretty much safe. Oh, ladder. So uh, as you may have seen before, we've had Magogs through killing in here. 
Now this place is our Vedran Underground, so we often have these train tracks, which is the old Vedran transit system or their means of transportation. So we've just run these all through the sets. But what's most amazing about these sets is, I mean, they really film like their cave and they feel like it and stuff like that. They hit hard and all that sort of stuff. We paint them different colors. If it's an ice world, it goes white. If it's a volcanic thing, it goes black. We're into the browns right now, sort of outcropping of crystals. And all sorts of really, you know, great shapes, great places to hide lights and bring people in out of tunnels. This would be the best paintball set in the world for the weekends. Um, different passages and all sorts of places where you could lose people and find new angles every week. But what's most amazing about this thing is actually how they build this. When you see how it's put together, and it's like an igloo of sticks, little match sticks that they put together. Then they'll put a tin foil heavy wrap on it, and then a guy will come in and basically spray all this stuff and then it solidifies and hardens. But inside, it's basically just a matchstick frame and elevations that these guys make, that the carpenters make. It's amazing to watch it come together. Well, she it's so behind some, some places where they built. So here we have you know, the start of our cave kind of thing like this. This is all textured. And this is exact, really what, what it's made of. It's just these really thin little sticks tin foil liner like that and then from there they spray on the hard coat there and then they paint it whatever it is and as you get back you can see that this whole thing is just some huge matchstick conglomeration that these guys basically you know make almost free form they've got a rough design when they start where they want to go but it's really up to the individual carpenters they're going along molding and building the walls and stuff like that and this this thing is huge this thing goes on forever and then again, up, up top, we've got all the catwalks, all the rigging, all the lights and everything ready to go. All the guys have to work all the lighting positions up again in the ceiling again. So uh, we're on the Eureka Maru now, which is uh, Becca Valentine's ship. And this was designed by our original designer, Ken Rebell. It has to be probably one of the best sets I've ever shot in has, uh, in terms of color, the texture, the feel, and the character and the guts of it. This is like the old pirate ship, the old Chevy pickup truck, whereas the Andromeda has always been the clean, pristine, ultimate warship. This is like your favorite Chevy pickup truck, and it is probably one of the best sets to shoot in. A lot of fun here. Uh, there's lots of different little compartments and little gangways and little secret alcoves and that, so it's kind of neat. You can hide a lot of lights, find a lot of neat new camera angles all the time. Um, we have the nose cone that is usually on, so if we're viewing out here, you can see it way out yonder. We have a full nose cone. We have a half nose cone. And if we're looking out here, we have green screen that goes out. Uh, we have trans lights that go out there if you're just shooting space and uh, the pilot seat's usually in. So if we're shooting back ahead on, we'll lose the nose cone, shoot straight in. Lots of different stations. Uh, trans you know, often works here. Anybody can work around here. We've got all the special rooms and that. All these doors, airlock doors, they all work. There's always a grip on the other side so we don't clunk anybody in the head. So all that stuff can happen. This is, uh, if you guys remember Trance's room where she kept the bonsai for years. So there's all her little stuff in here, all her plants and stuff like that. And then we come out to the main cabin and we've got, you know, levels. Ladders can go up above, matches down below. You can go down in those places. Um, we have, this would be the airlock door outside, so it's a double door, one out here, one out there, and we'll put whatever space station or translator, whatever world's out there, if people are coming on and off the ship. Uh, of course, every uh, ship needs a bar or a kitchen. So this is the place here. The Weissbrow beer is usually uh, hidden up there. That's where Harper keeps the stash, we're told. And uh, always crew needs a place to sleep. So here we have the bunks. So we got bunks down here. Guys will either, uh, Beck often has her boyfriends down here, which is what we did today. Harper will do whatever he's doing. We have bunks up above as well for all the crews, bunks all around so the whole crew can sleep, work all their stuff. Um, and of course, every Chevy pickup truck has got to have an engine. And the engine room here is quite neat too. So down here in the engine room is great because we can literally shoot 360 degrees, ceiling top to bottom, and when it's all sealed in, you cannot tell you're not in this complete environment. 
And it's uh, been a great set. It's just brilliantly designed, brilliant colors, and a brilliant texture. It's, it's, uh, I can't say enough about the work Ken Rebell did here. Um, a lot of old machines and technology, then we uh, bring in the new stuff as well. So she sort of scavenged all the stuff that you see in here. So we're saying she scavenged through the years. And then to see the outside of it, how it's actually built, a lot of these pieces are just put together like septic field tanks or, or found vacuform or different elements you would find in industry that they've come in here and slapped on, like old switching panels like this, probably stolen from an old tele telephone company. And they put it on here, we put a few blinky lights in, and once you get enough of it on a wall, it all looks like part and parcel of this old Chevy pickup truck that's been put together. And uh, we'll take a look around outside and just see how this thing's actually built. Let's watch your step. So all the electrics, they have all different, you know, again, switched, switched uh, circuits and that they're all running dimmers for all the chase circuits and all that sort of stuff that you see going all the time. They, we programmed them in over the years now. It just almost runs by itself in a lot of ways. For the whole engine room wall, which you see back here, the whole thing is one solid structure that can roll out. So if we're going to shoot a fight scene across here, this whole section when we clear out will just roll out and we can get all the cameras in as well. And for something like the narrow hallways, we've got chases like this that go on. They're all baffled. And it's all just plywood and you know, lighting gear, lighting circuits, special effects guys with nitrogen drops, steam, and all sorts of stuff. I mean, these guys will have these sort of steam kettles running all the time. And they'll come up through little vents and portholes that we've got lit and stuff like that. So the ship looks like a really working environment wherever you're going all the time. You can see the bells and whistles turning, whereas the Andromeda is so ultra sleek, you don't see how it works. This, you see all the, the six cylinder engine kind of running. One thing you've got to understand about a movie set is this isn't a real spaceship. And things and doors and all that are not real. Like this handle, as Gordon Woolvett found out, isn't an actual real secure space handle. And one day, he was quite a bit of a monkey in the set all the time, like grabbing on things. He grabbed onto this handle and went shooting through here. And basically, that handle tore off because you see it's kind of, kind of loose. And he went full body like this and basically landed like this with his head on the threshold. Pretty much knocked himself out, brought in the ambulance. We asked him how many fingers. He said Tuesday, so we knew we were in trouble. And he had a bit of a concussion and all that. But he could have really, really broke his neck and killed himself. So he's lucky. So uh, we now affectionately call this little number up here the Harper handle. So this set here, to our devoted fans, they will notice that it's awfully familiar to our Andromeda hangar. And indeed it is. And it's been uh, masterfully re reworked by our production designer, Brian Kane. And before, this was probably my least favorite set because it's essentially just a big square shoebox with no depth and very little character. And he has opened it up, changed it, brought some great color, brought some great depth into it. Um, with just stuff that's been basically lying around. There's very little money, and we've made this our bar on C4-1, uh, which is this new planet system where our, our lads find ourselves trapped. Um, and like all bars, some big sorrow goes on here and some big fights go on. And tomorrow, we're having a big Nietzschean fight, big brawl going on in the bar. Uh, we pack it full of locals. We pack it with a couple of dummies who just sit at the table all the time just to fill it out as if they're passed out. Um, and again, same thing. We've got tons of rigging up above. We've got chain motors to hold certain things. We've got fly rigs for stunt guys. There's a pick point there. That we're going to fly a stunt guy tomorrow. So it would land him there, and the guys would pull from off of there, and that'll fly him to wherever he's got to go. We've got uh, straight outside. We'll go to our exterior. And we built this entire exterior town in basically our parking lot, which is just off the loading base. So that exterior door will exactly match. So we can take somebody right out the bar. And we've had one bar fight that went right from here, went outside, and then came right back in here and finished off in here. It's a big, big bar fight. And uh, so this has been a great place for, for meeting place, a lot of expo expository dialogue. Um, but it's been nice because that now we're on this planet, we've actually been able to light through windows and stuff like that that we've got here and here, which um, being on Andromeda all the time and being in space, you've never lit through windows. It's an odd thing. It's always an artificial environment. So you're, you tend to be lighting with a lot of Kino and stuff like that. So windows, windows, and stuff like that. It's nice to be in a natural environment. So it's very much like a Western town feel or you know, a different sort of space frontier town where there's no water and it's very dry and, and 
desert. We've got the uh, rec requisite um, hooker parlor in there where people go through and stuff like that. Um, the still that pumps out uh, some undrinkable stuff that you can barely stomach. And all sorts of different remnants of Andromeda and Highgard things. They don't know where this environment is. Is it, is it another reality? Is it a crashed asteroid belt where these guys have salvaged all these pieces? So it's supposed to look strange, but yet familiar at the same time. So I, well, I noticed a lot of the fans have recognized certain elements of the Maru here and other things like that. And yeah, it's all here, but it's all supposed to be part and parcel of the, the story that where these guys are right now. So, and that's where we are. We have our Soros here. <laughs> <laughs>